Hello, Mr. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. 13 Things or Sounds Did Good, depending on which channel I'm posting to. Uh, and we're right in the middle of actually doing a quaternion rotation of a point defined as x is 1, y is 0, and z is 0 about an axis that is defined as basically in the xy plane with an angle of 60 degrees from the x-axis. So that would also be pi over 3. Uh, and we're going to be rotating it 60 degrees as well. So we have a rotation of 60 degrees about an axis that is 6 degrees um, from the x-axis. So you're going to see this as we as we pair this up with a little bit of a video uh, to kind of show you in the end how this is done uh, in real space. And your, your mind can visualize that uh, if you're looking at someone kind of describing rotations a lot easier than you can do the math, to tell you the truth. So as you go through and do this, it's nice. We're doing something called a sandwich product. It's a great idea to go ahead so you don't get screwed up like I usually do. As soon as you know your quaternion of rotation, you go ahead and put it on both sides of this kind of template, if you would. And I'm doing this in smooth draw, so that allows me to leave some kind of under, uh, kind of feathered out other layers so I can actually bring things back and, you know, and check your work or have a kind of under template um, like I'll show you here in a, this thing on the bottom here if I can turn that off see that picture that goes on and off so it's a great has some great value so we're gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of that so we have our sandwich product ready to go this we said is minus one-fourth because this is the conjugate and the conjugate you get the conjugate of a vector no matter what the vector is, it is the vector that's multiplied by your original vector, which results in the square of the magnitude of the vector. Essentially, you do it by switching the signs on the imaginary components. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that out. I go to here to the green, and I'm going to say this is minus the square root of 3 over 4. And if you don't know how we got these numbers, go back and look at discussion of quaternions or in the previous video and we're going to go ahead and go here and put zero here now what we're going to need to do is now multiply all of this out and what I'm going to do for the first time is anytime there's a zero I'm just going to exit out to make it a little bit simpler to see I'll do that in yellow if I could um, might be better to use another neutral color but I won't do that so right now we know that we're using something essentially what you learned way back in the lattice method. If you haven't looked at the lattice method, go out and look on YouTube or Khan Academy or just about anyone will let you know that the lattice method is about teaching you of that you can break numbers into constituent components and multiply each constituent component of each by the each and every constituent component of the other. You'll also see as we get going on this, it's a lot of what matrix calculations are as well. So when, since we have a zero here, that's not going to make a difference. I'm going to go edit undo, so edit undo, so I can put this all in yellow. I click. Not that zero is anything. Zero is not necessarily real or unreal or a real number. So those are all going to be zero. These are all going to be zero. These are all going to be zero. And this usually won't be the case. We picked, and this is going to be zero here. So all we got to really do is calculate three numbers. We have to know now that a real times a i is going to be an i, right? So that's going to be red. Remember, i is that component we've been doing in red. So this is going to be, for now, the square root of 3 over 2. And you see that it's in red. Now, this is going to be i times i so that's going to be a yellow because it's going to be a real number but it's also going to have a sign shift so we're going to go ahead and you do that because when you have i squared you get minus one but for starts you just multiply each box together so you can see the consistency of learning the lattice method later on you're going to see this also is going to be negative because it's i times i we put the negative up there that comes from the multiplying of the unit vectors so um, and we talked about in the last video that i squared equals minus one so therefore we have what this is going to turn out is going to be minus a quarter and we have now finally a 
J component times an I component, which is going to be a K component. You're going to see the beauty of the coloring part of this. You're mixing colors in some ways, not the way you would think about it, but in fact, we know that this is going to be the square root of 3 over 4. Right? Now we have to understand that if we go J times I, J times I, we have a minus K right here. j times i, we get a minus k. So we now have numbers to bring over here. So we have the end, we kind of have a calculation already for the first half of our sandwich product. First half of our sandwich product, what we have right here, we know we have a real value of minus one quarter. And I'll point out one more time why you have the minus one quarter. First you got a quarter times one, that gave you the value essentially in the box. But then you also had the fact that this was i times i, which gets you minus 1, and so that all comes minus, becomes minus 1 quarter. We now have then the square root of 3 over 2 is, if you notice here, it's positive, right, in the i component direction. So we're going to go ahead and bring that one over. So this becomes a square root of 3 over 2, and one that I had screwed up before. Let's see, we have no green component here. If you think about it, there is no, this would have been green here, but it's zero. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, learning that sometimes if you lose place and, you know, where your values are, it can make a big difference. It may seem small and inconsequential when you're doing just tens and ones and hundreds places, but it's kind of a big deal and it is a big deal here as well and finally we have what became of the square root of 3 over 4 which is negative as well in blue which would be the k direction once more time or the k component and so we have minus the square root of 3 over 4 so what we've gotten here is just basically half of our weird rotation in 4D space to get 3D space working without gimbal lock. And now we just run the calculations one more time. They become a little bit more difficult because you've got fractions going on, but we're going to go and continue now and finish this out. So we know a real times a real is a real. And so we'll do all the reals first. So this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 8. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the zeros as long as we got our yellow pen. Well, this is zero here still, so that's going to be zeros going down here, and these are going to be zeros down here. Which means now we have a lot more calculation to do, but we not, not as little as last time, but we don't have to actually go in to look at every cell. If you think about that, we now have um, real times uh, an i direction is going to be an i, so we're going to go ahead and put that one in. This is going to be the square root this is going to be 3 fourths and this one is going to be again this is going to be blue because real times the k direction is the k direction and so this is going to be minus the square root of 3 over 4 when we go down to the next one, we now have real times i, which is going to be i, and if you notice there, that becomes 1 16th positive, once again in red. So I'll finish up the red one. So we have one, minus 1 quarter times minus 1 quarter is 1 16th. We have minus 1 quarter times the square root of 3 over 2 is the square root of 3 over 8. But now it's red times red, so it is real. So it's i squared, and we'll first put it down as a square root of 3 over 8. Right? But then we notice that it's negative here. But it's also negative because of the i squared. It was the first negative came from the fact that you have negative times a positive negative, but we have i squared. And so you're going to see, you start to learn to look for this, so you haven't blown your calculations. These two will negate each other, and you'll end up with a zero as your output real value, which makes sense 
because you're doing a quaternion rotation of something that had a zero real value at the start. So we'll continue on through. Now we have a basically a blue times a red is going to be a green, but if you think about it that way, you're not necessarily there. You're just going to first do the numbers. This is going to be 3 over 16 or 3 sixteenths. It's going to be green. Right, so 3 sixteenths. And that's not three, it is the square root of three, right? And we'll think about the sign here in a little bit. This becomes negative and negative, so that would be positive. However, this is k times i, k times i, which is gonna be a positive square root of three over 16. So there's no sh sign shifts up here in this box. We're gonna con continue going through, almost done, Hopefully we'll finish it up within the 15 minutes. So we've got here, now we've got the square root of three over 16 and it's positive. So, and that's going to be once again in the J direction or the green direction. The square root of three over 16. We go here, now we have red, which is I times J, which is going to be a positive K, it's going to be blue, but we multiply these out and we have minus 3 eighths. So we're going to go to blue. And we have a minus 3 eighths. And we have one value left and that in fact is a K direction times a J direction, which is going to be a minus I direction. So you have this once again, back to the I, you're going to have that sense of a negative here coming from that. But now we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So we have three sixteenths. Three sixteenths. But that is negative. So as you end up summing all these up, you end up with a final vector that is equal to, or a quaternion if you would. So this all kind of take all that and sum it out. And you get a vector that looks like this. It's zero in the real component, which is expected. If that doesn't work out, you've blown the calculation. If you start with zero here and you do the sandwich product, you'll end up with zero as the output. You then have 5 eighths in the red or in the I direction. So you have 5 eighths in the green direction you have, or the J direction, you have 3 sixteenths times the square root of 3. So we'll see what that turns out to be. 3 sixteenths times the square root of 3. And in the K direction you have is the blue direction, you have minus three-fourths. Now, doing this for one point, you can see how difficult that is in terms of sign blows and potentials of square roots getting missed and everything else, but I'm going to point out a couple of checks you have here before we end this video, and that is if you started with Zero in the imagine in the real, you're going to end up with zero in the output. You can also check just for grins the fact that if you multiply a rotation quaternion by its conjugate, you end up with something that's got a magnitude. It's equal to the square of the magnitude of the vector. But more likely, you're more likely to do something like this in also a CAD engine, which is what we're usually doing, you're not moving robots around too much without a computer because of the times um, it would take to do the computations. And so you'll see that understanding that this works for not just one point, but for any set of points is kind of a key thing. You'll then also notice that when you see, anytime you see numbers stacked in boxes like this, you're gonna assume that matrices is gonna be part of your solution. And when we start looking at the program, you're going to see that that's the case. Thanks for listening.